So what's special about this location? Well, three words, great crested grebe. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I come here for that particular bird. There is a pair here, I think most years, and I've seen the pair this spring. I've even seen them doing a bit of displaying. But the reason I'm here today for this video is just to make the most of these conditions. If I get any grebes, that would be fantastic, but it's just potluck, you never know. These conditions are absolutely perfect for my style of photography. I absolutely love it. This place lends itself really well to early morning mists if you get the right conditions. So it was cold overnight and then pretty low winds. Um, very cold still this morning. I'm actually lying on frost at the moment. When that happens here, you tend to get mist over this pond. It's kind of like a fishing pond. I'm lying on there like a bit of a fishing jetty at the moment, which gets me closer to the water and importantly gets me really low down as well. Um, the mist is already starting to burn off a little bit. And my shooting position now is, is like directly towards the sun, directly towards the, where the sun is coming up. Well, what's great about this location is there's a really steep bank on the other side. So if you're shooting towards the sun, a lot of the time that's going to be difficult because you're, you're going to get lens flare if you're shooting directly towards it. But here we've got this bank and to the left uh, we've got a lot of bushes as well, bushes and trees, so that all acts as like a background. So if you get the sun coming through onto the mist, you get the mist in the pictures, but you get sort of a dark background to put it against. It works absolutely fantastically. Uh, so we've probably got, I don't know, I might have like another half an hour uh, of these conditions. It's a grebe. There's a great crested grebe. It's, they're always so far away here. It's like in the middle of the pond. But... He was calling. He was calling, so he's probably calling to the mate. Should be somewhere. Oh wow, that was absolutely brilliant. Um, saw one great crested grebe. I mean, it's quite far away. Just one, take, took a few shots and then the other one appeared and then they did a bit of displaying. They actually did some head shaking, absolutely fantastic. So they're quite far away, but because of the conditions, it doesn't matter as much. It can be really, really small in the frame in these misty conditions and you can still get a really good image. You don't have to be close. That's the benefit of good weather. It's just dived underwater. that is just surrounded, surrounded by mist. It's just dived. Oh, it's back. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. See, so, I don't mind what it is. Can I get it diving? Oh, <laughs> I got the back. I got the back end of it diving, but... You're going to get a mixture of images as the sun comes up. So initially it's going to be pretty dark, it's not going to be a lot of colour. You're going to get like those, those moodier shots so with a bluer cast to them, which I really like. And then when the sun breaks through, that's when you can get just some of the most amazing colour. That's probably when you're going to get the most dramatic looking images with the deepest colour. Yeah, get really, really orange sometime as the sun starts to burn through that mist first thing. That's the best time for colour. And then as it gets higher in the sky and the mist starts to burn off, it just, it it loses that colour, um, maybe it goes through like a, a sepia stage, almost like a bit of a sepia tone to it. And then eventually you're just kind of shooting almost silhouettes really. Once the sun gets high enough and the mist burns off, you're almost just shooting pure silhouettes, which is just, you know, not what I've come for. 
I do find mist can be great as well for just including some of the surroundings. Uh, I guess it, it kind of softens, it softens things a bit more, a bit of a lower contrast, and you can include the surroundings and the habitat really, really well. That's something I love to do. Got some great pictures of the swans here. Again, first thing, early morning mist, uh, before the sun had got too high, and the way the light was hitting it was just absolutely perfect. Just lighting up the reeds in the background, still some mist over that water. If you watch my videos you'll know a bit about this camera support and it's perfect for these kind of things when you're lying on the ground. Uh, if you do this try and use it with a ball head, it's quite a big chunky ball head this and then if you've got three different uh, knobs on it like I have then use all three of them. This is what I found is if you use all three it just seems to work better. You want to make sure you can um, you can pan that way, no pun intended, no pan intended and uh, the other two just adjust it till it feels right that you've got enough movement uh, but you don't want it kind of falling over to the side so make sure that it's not too slack but if you just all three uh, i find you can get like the the perfect amount of movement I'm not going to pretend this is comfortable. There's just no way around it. It's just it's not comfortable. But um, hopefully, it's only probably for about two hours. Probably won't do much more than that. Um, lying on a hard surface, I tend to get either neck ache or back ache or both. Sometimes I'll use an angle finder instead of the viewfinder, so you can look down. It kind of saves your neck a bit. But it just depends exactly how low you are, where your head is in relation to the camera. Uh, and here, I just find it better just to look through the viewfinder. I just find it works much better. I'm using manual exposure with automatic ISO today. I'm just kind of thinking, you know, when you get to the upper and lower limit of that, uh, in terms of it's too dark, it's too bright, what happens? And basically what happens is nothing happens because the, you know, the exposure doesn't change because it's manual. So if it reaches the upper or the lower end of the ISO, then it doesn't go anywhere. So it'll either come out too dark or too bright. When I'm shooting into the mist, I usually add plus two thirds or plus one compensation. I find that gives me a better exposure. Oh. Warm, wow. I didn't take a huge amount of images today, but that's absolutely fine. I've really enjoyed it, and I think what I have taken, I'm going to like. Even the grebes, as far away as they were, and tiny in the frame, um, because of the light and the mist, I think that's going to carry it enough that those shots are actually going to be pretty good. We'll check on the computer later. And if you have got a place like this yourself, a fishing pond like this one, or a lake, whatever it is, whatever it's, if it's just common species, it doesn't matter. If you can wait for these conditions, uh, get out there first thing in the morning at sunrise, you have a good chance of getting some really atmospheric bird photographs. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you're not subscribed, then do click on the subscribe button and I'll see you sometime on a frost covered fishing jetty sometime soon.